Now, here's Lisa French. Oh, yeah, that Bill Maher is something else, isn't he? He's a real piece of cake. Real little cherry on top. My word. Have you heard the latest of what he said? Well, I'm going to tell you what happened. So in one of his latest shows, he had Rick Lazio on, who is the former U.S. rep from New York. Do you remember Lazio? He ran against Hillary Clinton for the U.S. Senate seat, and then when they were debating, he kind of came over too close. And people thought, well, he invaded her space. That's disrespectful. Remember that? And so he went kaput. Then I don't know who Melissa Harris Perry is. She's some liberal professor at Tulane. He was on the show. And Larry King was also on the show. And they get into the debate about who's going to run on the Republican side for 2012. And, of course, Sarah Palin came up. Larry King said, well, what do you think about Sarah Palin? Well, here is what Bill Maher had to say. And watch your ears because, you know, he's such a peach. Such a peach. It's not all pretty, but we did. It's bleeped, right? Okay. What was that? Wait, I'm sorry. Wrong clip. Wrong clip. Wrong clip. First of all, n nothing really matters, I think, this far out from a presidential election. Polls change. That's when it gets down to two people, the electorate always holds their nose and votes for the one they like that, the least. If true. the economy is in the toilet, I, I, I think I, Palin I, could be. I, I think anybody could be president in this dumb <laughs> country. Okay. Excuse my language. Okay, Bill Maher. You think anybody could be president in this dumb bleeping country? I really, and can you believe how people are clapping? He's basically calling all Americans fools because we voted for the dumb guy. It's your dumb guy in there, Bill Maher. You're, you're the one who helped set the low bar. So while he's trying to attack and demean Sarah Palin, what he's really doing is acknowledging that Obama's not qualified. And we elected somebody already who set this low standard for president. Well, maybe it is true that someone like Sarah Palin. Oh, who, oh, wait, that's right. She was actually a governor of a state. OK, someone like Sarah Palin, who was just a lowly governor of a big state, an oil state. Someone like Herman Cain. Oh, so short on credentials. He was only an executive at a major company, only on the board of directors of, board of, directors of the uh, National Food Council. Oh, nothing to look at there. Maybe they did think to themselves, look, I have better ideas than this. If someone who is su such less experience can run for president of the United States, well, maybe I do have a chance. God knows I have more to offer than him. The number is to join the show, 836-0590, toll free. 877-590-KLBJ. I'm Lisa Fritch. Yeah, that's right. Bill, maybe anyone can. But what I what I think is profound in when he said that is he didn't say that the candidates were dumb. He called this country dumb. And therein lies the mentality and what's wrong with the liberal left and all of the people and the Americans who voted for this hope and change notion that, oh, we hope it's going to all be okay. Oh, it'll change things not to have somebody who's a career politician. They go and demand that we back this empty suit. And then when he gets elected and he starts failing, they go back and they blame us. He makes it our problem. The country's dumb. No, the country's not dumb, Bill. We were we were maybe a little bit duped. We were a little bit off of our game, but we're not dumb. What we're trying to do is get everything back on track to rectify some of the the moment momentary insanity that we did have. And you're trying to stop it. Eight three six zero five ninety toll free, eight seven seven five nine zero K L B J. Amy, welcome to the show. Amy, 
What happened to Amy? Okay, we'll just uh, go to the next call here. Dennis, thank you for joining us today. You're on KLBJ. Hi, Lisa. I think one of the things that maybe our all of us in our country need to do is stop buying the package. Stop buying the pretty picture. Uh, start judging uh, a, a, a candidate uh, by what they say and, and what, they, what they've done in the past. And uh, I think that's where we need to come from. They are so uh, afraid that, that Obama is not going to be able to make people forget the trail of damage and trash he's left since 2008. Right. Righto. That, and, and, you know, I think I think that this country is ready for someone that would tell it like it is, uh, kind of Truman-esque, if you will. But uh, And I would put this forth, and I'll get off the line. Uh, I really think that General McChrystal, who, who told Washington to stick it in their ear, would make a darn good either presidential or vice presidential candidate for this country. Personally, I'd like him for president. Uh, I'm just wondering if there's anything afoot there. Well, you know, I think it's a great idea to have someone with the military experience, considering we're in three wars right now and all of the turmoil that's going on in the Middle East. We do need somebody with a strong defense military background to balance out all of the politics that's going on. But, you know, the thing about the thing about someone with that kind of background, they don't want anything to do with this crap. They don't want to be involved sitting around those sleazy suits all day long. They want to get on with their business. And I just think they feel like they can serve better behind the scenes of politics. Well, I think, I think that if, if, if we had a, a uh, military figure come forward with enough gumption, uh, that with enough love of country to realize that we need leadership, we, we, are, we are and have been in a leadership vacuum in this country. And we really need someone to take things in hand and get this thing going in the right direction. I agree with you, Dennis. We don't have that. And right now, to be honest with you, I don't see a a candidate who has stepped up to the plate with that experience, with that kind of background, with that kind of expertise. I I I know. I don't see. And you know, you see so many candidates that you go, well, hey, this guy sounds okay. This, This person sounds all right. And then all of a sudden, they come out of their, some, I, lunacy falls out of the front of their face. Nobody's I, warmed my heart yet. That's all I can say. Nobody's got my juices going yet. Thank you, Lisa. Have a great afternoon. Thanks, Dennis. Appreciate your call. 836-0590. Toll free 877-590-KLBJ. I am Lisa Fritch. Follow me on Twitter at Lisa Fritch or go to my Facebook fan page. I'm always happy to chat with you after the show. We have Amy back. Thank you, Amy. Welcome back. Thank you. I'm sorry. I got cut off earlier. No problem. Hey, um, I just wanted to comment about the Bill Maher thing. I thought what he said sounds like from, it sounds very, very disrespectful when you first hear it, but I think what he was really referring to was um, maybe he was referring to George Bush. A lot of people don't like him. He wasn't very popular. Hmm. And whereas Obama, I think it had, uh, I think he's great. I mean, I, I think he's a wonderful president. So I don't know. I, I think you think it was funny. about Bush. I think it was really about Palin. But he didn't say any uh, dummy could get elected in this country. He said anybody could get elected in this dumb bleeping country. So he's calling the he's disrespecting the United States of America, the red, yeah. white and blue. That's so the problem. He's just saying that the whole process is fraught with. Uh, stupidity, because we have so many people who are really just commentators on the radio. I mean, not not disrespectful to you, but <laughs> people right, who man. are running for president who are commentators for president. You know, uh, uh, that's what I have trouble with. These aren't people who are really experienced. I guess I'm thinking of. Uh, well, but, okay, has some Amy, that might be true, but give me a, a, a give me an example of a better system, a better republic out there give me any other example that beats what we have going in the united states of america he can't name one and i would i would challenge anybody to call here and and give us a better system what we have going on in this country is great and it's great that we you know that we've broken the the model of i'm um, not sure it's so great anymore because really? what i'm finding is that there's so much things you think of like a grassroots organization getting behind a candidate whatever whatever uh persuasion that candidate is but the reality is they're super turf they're not really grassroots these are all funded by large corporations so what should it and, be back to the king and queen you're well, born into you're born into the the leadership 
No, I, I think you're wrong there. Well, obviously that's no. Not I'm just asking because I, I, I'm assuming you're talking about the Tea Party when you no. say that the grassroots organization that backs yeah. up a candidate. Yeah, yeah, there are some examples of that, but it it goes across all aisles. But really, what I'm trying to say is that we need some campaign finance reform. We need the people to be in charge of who they vote for, not the corporation. Because that worked out so well for Obama, who agreed to take the 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 campaign finance cap, only he did not, and went on to raise like you know billions of dollars to I to campaign. And I can tell you that he had one of the largest grassroots organizations. But then Ever. it's okay yeah, if it's grassroots Obama for Obama, but not grassroots for the conservative. No, no, this isn't the same thing. This is my pocketbook, which is not very big. I'm not talking, I'm not at and I'm not Exxon. Those people look, a, that march with the Tea Party and support their candidates, they're like you. They're giving 10 no, 20 they're the $30. Brothers. They're not. Have you heard, do you know who the Koch brothers are? They but, have uh, one of the largest private pipeline companies, transporters. They're extremely wealthy. That's and on every I, side. Every side does that. Bill Clinton was taking oil money. Hillary Clinton was taking oil money. It doesn't. The bottom line is, Amy, is mm-hmm. that the American voter has to be smarter. This is not a dumb country. We have to stick to our values, our system of morality, and vote for a candidate who is not just full of hot air. Like Obama was. If you can tell I, I me one positive thing he has done for this country, then I will let you go with my blessing. Absolutely. I can think of many things he's done. One. Really I just want one. Department of Justice. He's starting to change everything that's going on that went wrong with the Department of Justice under Bush. That's just one of many examples. The Department I, of Justice? I, why? By, by bringing in Sotomayor? How did that? Look, by taking out some of the corrupt officials that were there earlier? Yes. By making it more fair, by making uh, pushing for rights for gays and lesbians. He removes yeah. corruption because, oh, I'm sorry, Taking that's right. Away. The guy who was in charge of the finance committee didn't pay his taxes, the Treasury. Oh, I mean, he's full of corruption, Amy. I'm sorry. No, I don't think so. I, I think that you're going to find that the American people will vote in 2012. Obama? Well, Amy, I got to say, I appreciate you because obviously we are totally different minded politically, but I appreciate you stretching yourself as I do when I'm forced to watch Bill Maher to listen to a different point of view. I mean, that's really having these, you know, hugging it out like this is really the only way we're going to get someplace. And I I do love it when people who think differently call because it gives you a chance to get gain some insight. But it sounds like to me. That he, you are in love with the, the idea of who he could be or who he should be or who he said he was going to be because he's honestly not any of those things he wrote in on the high horse saying he was. I think he's hampered by the political system right now with the Republicans putting obstructionist uh, uh, obstructions against everything that's progressive. The Republicans, after all, Bonner said in the early in early on in this campaign, he said, we've got to get Obama. That's just not very, uh, that's not very, that's not like you're working together. It, it creates a lot of divisiveness. But hey, thanks a lot for giving me a voice. I really appreciate it. <laughs> you're welcome, thanks Amy. Thank you. She didn't quite earn the blessing, though. I can't give her props because she still did not name one thing that he's done positive for the country. Okay, when we come back, Let's just let this marinate over the break for a second. I want to know what you think it would be like if during President Reagan's tenure, during his presidency, if when Nancy Reagan was, uh, her her issue was just say no to drugs. Every clip of President Reagan was getting sloshed on alcohol. Like, woohoo here, clink, clink there, go keg in here. How would that have looked, y'all? We're going to discuss it when we come back on KLBJ. The numbers are 836-0590. Toll free 877-590-KLBJ, y'all. This is Your Sunday Best with Lisa Fritch. Call in now with your comments, 836-0590 or toll free 1-877-590-KLBJ. 